some exact values, and it's called completing the square. Okay, it's called completing the square, and the whole point of it is so that we get something that looks like this. We get it in a perfect square trinomial form. We're going to turn things into perfect square trinomials. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, and actually, if you've ever been curious, where does the quadratic formula come from? Who on earth figured out that if you take the opposite of b and you add the square root of b squared minus 4ac and divide all that by 2a, how on earth do you get the answer for x? Where does that come from? It actually comes from completing the square. I'm not going to show you that proof, but I did want to mention that. Um, so if you ever run into it in the future. So we are going to look at another technique for solving quadratic equations, and it's called completing the square. Now, like the quadratic formula, technically it will work on any uh, quadratic. It's just certain ones are easier to use completing the square uh, on than others. But the quadratic formula works on any of them. Completing the square technically does. It's just, it can be a little more difficult in certain situations. So let's um, start by writing down some uh, steps here. Okay, so uh, they're just giving us part of the problem right now. We're going to start with the beginning of it, and then we're going to look at how do we actually use this to solve equations. Right now it's not an equation. It's just an incomplete expression here. Okay, we want to complete the square with y squared plus 30y plus, we've got to figure out what to put there in order to make this a perfect square. So we take our, um, our a is 1, okay, so we're good there. We take our b, 30, we divide it by 2, we get 15. Then we square it. That is 225. No, I do not have that memorized. I did it in first period and I just remembered it. Don't be too impressed. <clears throat> That's what goes as your constant term. 225 is your constant term. That is now a perfect square trinomial. 15 times 15 is 225. 15 plus 15 is 30. So then if we want to factor this, it's going to be y plus 15 squared. Every single time, the number you squared is what goes inside your factor. And the first sign is the sign that goes in the factor. So it was positive 30, so it's going to be plus 15. Is this supposed to be what? Uh, they won't all be that big. It's just because 15 is a, a larger number. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they're big, sometimes they're big. It just depends on what you get after you divide by 2. Okay? All right, let's look at number 5. Okay? Uh, because unfortunately, even though A is 1, when we go to divide B by 2, um, and I'm ignoring the negative for this second because it really doesn't matter because we're getting ready to square the number. So I'm just leaving the negative out of it so we don't have to worry about accidentally getting a negative where we're not supposed to. Um, when we go to divide 11 by 2, it's not evenly divisible. So we just leave it. Okay, We leave it 11 over 2 and we're going to square it. Now when you square a fraction, you square the numerator and you square the denominator. You can either do those individually in your calculator, or if you do it as a fraction, you have to make sure that you get parentheses around it, okay? Um, 11 over 2 squared, and then of course you'd have to turn it into a fraction. Um, if you just type 11 over 2 and you square it, guess what it's going to give you? 11 over 4. It's only going to square the 2 because exponents come before division in the order of operations. So either square the 11 and square the 2, or put it in parentheses when you put it in your calculator. So 121 over 4 is the number that completes the square. And then when we factor this, it's going to be x minus, because that was a minus sign right there, and then 11 over 2 is going to be our factor. Okay? So pretty straightforward. Let's practice with that real quick though. Two through four, okay? Number one, notice the constant term is always going to be positive because that is the result of squaring a number. Whether you square a positive or a negative, you're always going to get a positive because you, squaring something is multiplying a number by itself. So if you multiply a positive by a positive, you're going to get a positive. 
you multiply negative by negative, you're going to get a positive. So these constant terms are always positive on the end. But within your factors, the positive and the negative is determined by your linear term, the, the term with the x to the first power, or r to the first power, whatever it is, okay? Um, the second thing I wanted to mention was the constant doesn't really affect, I mean, it kind of does, but um, it doesn't have much impact on how you factor these, okay? I think y'all discovered that it's always x plus or minus whatever divided by 2 is always what goes in your parentheses. But this constant number, you're going to have to know that for where we're going with this later on, okay? So um, don't completely neglect this part just so you can factor it. You do need to know that constant term because it will impact our problems here in a minute. Okay, questions about any of those? Okay, let's look at number nine. What happens if our A is not equal to one? So, it's really not a big deal. We're going to factor out our leading coefficient, and then we're going to proceed like we did before. Okay, so for number nine, we've got 7n squared plus 14n plus, we've got to figure out what to put in blank, but first, we're going to factor out the 7. So, divide both those terms by 7. So, we get n squared plus, uh, not 14, I took out a 7. I'm trying to talk and write at the same time. 2n, I apologize, okay? Take out the 7, so we've got n squared plus 2n, and we're trying to figure out what to put right there. So our new b is 2. Divide by 2, we get 1. 1 squared is 1. So then this factors 7 times n plus 1 squared. When the 1 is involved, it kind of throws people for a loop. Um, because it's what completes the square and then it's what goes in the factor as well, but that's just because 1 squared is 1. It doesn't change. 1 to any power is 1. Okay? Let's do another one with the uh, a is not equal to 1. Let's look at number 13. 5r squared minus 7r plus blank. Okay, now, it's going to be a little weird. You're probably not going to like it, but I know 5 is not a factor of 7. I know that. But we're still going to factor out of 5. And here's where it comes in handy to understand that factoring out of GCF is like dividing. Okay? So 7 fifths is now our linear term. Okay, so I factor it out of 5, even though 5 is not a factor of 7, so it's just 7 over 5 is what goes right there. Now, let's have a little fractions lesson, may we? 7 over 5 divided by 2. Now, you can do this in your calculator, but you've got to be careful with parentheses, or you can remember how to operate with fractions. When you divide a fraction by a number, we keep the top fraction the same, we flip the bottom one over and it becomes multiplication. So we divide it by 2, that's the same as 2 over 1. So we keep the 7 fifths, it's multiplied by 1 half, so that is 7 over 10. If you don't believe me, you can type it into your calculator. Put 7 fifths in parentheses, divided by 2, make it a fraction, there's 7 tenths, okay? So that's b divided by 2. we got to square it. So that's 49 over 100. That is what completes our square. And then the factoring would be 5 times r minus 7 over 10 squared. Okay? So that's about as difficult as it's going to get. But the process is still exactly the same. The only difference is you got to factor out the GCF. Sometimes it doesn't go evenly, just like sometimes it's not evenly divisible by 2. So you're going to have to operate with some fractions. If you don't like doing this, but pretty much, if you divide a fraction by 2, 
you're always multiplying the denominator by two. Right? You divide a fraction by two, you're multiplying the denominator by two. Square it with the square and the factor. Okay? So these might take you a little bit longer, but practice.